I'd just like to try you with another letter here. Yeah, this is another letter from your father to Anthony Pohl, written sometime in 19, to the later part of 1948. So mm -hmm. he's finishing 1984, and his, his serious illness is becoming grave to the point where he, well, I mean, as we, we know, on finishing 1984, he, um, he literally fell, fell down and was taken yes. away. Now, he says to Anthony Pohl, um, this is in late 1948, Richard is blooming and getting enormous. I don't think somehow he'll be much your one for book learning. He is rather backward in talking and shows no interest in learning his letters, aged four and a half. But on the other hand, he's good with machinery and likes working on the farm, fishing and things like that. I'm not going to influence him, but would like it if he went in for farming. Perhaps the only job there will be after the atom bombs. <laughs> now, what, what do you think about that as a, as a reading of your, your infant character? <laughs> Probably wasn't far off the mark, actually. <laughs> There's another letter, by the way, the, the not being able to read thing. There is a letter that predates this where he writes to Anthony Pohl saying that, you, that a, 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 low, a low comic paper is got for you each week from Dundee, which must be the Beano, presumably. The no, it was the Dandy. It was the Dandy. Yeah. <laughs> so you were reading something. Well, I suppose so, but I mean, the point was I didn't really have any cause to, to learn to, to, to talk mm. because there was only myself and, and my father and, and Avril, and I, I suppose I pointed and made noises and generally made myself understood. So without any children round about me, the uh, the opportunity to sort of talk and, and, and to relate with did, people. Did he, was... did he read to you? Did he read? Yes, he did. did. Yes, I, Beatrix Potter certainly was. Oh yes, yes. Was being read to me. I had. I think I've had the whole. That's interesting. Lot. No, because I, I would be very interested in what I'll call your father's rat phobia. Your rat. His rat fixation. Obviously, Samuel Whiskers had something to do. Well, with Well, possibly. I don't know. No, no, no because in fact, that his juror diaries are full of rats in the bar. I shot three rats in the bar. Enormous rat found in the. <laughs> Clearly, there was something going on here. Yeah, a lot of rats. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he was interested in them sort of more than in the usual course of being um, in rats, wasn't he? <laughs> well, of course, yeah. I mean, he was using that as part of uh, 1984, as mm. part of the theme. Um, he was, actually, he was, he was well versed in country matters. He, he knew a lot about the country, about animals, about plants. He, he when he was a small, well, say a small boy, when he, uh, early, sort of 9, 10, 11, when he, they, they lived in, um, down on the Thames, he would go bird nesting and, and steal eggs like it was going out of fashion. Um, it was appalling, really, I suppose, if you think about it now. But of course, in those days, it didn't. Uh, it wasn't a, b a big issue. And he used to chop up the adders, didn't he? Yes, also, well, what was quite about. Yes, yeah, so there were a lot of adders. Well, the chance of him cutting them into sort of. Um, I'm not quite well. If he did, I, I certainly saw him do it once. Um, he, he stood on an adder, which we he found, and uh, proceeded to um, fillet the damn thing from one end to the other. Um, Why? <laughs> well, Why? I'm not Why quite you... sure. It was certainly made, made damn sure it was dead, that was for sure. <laughs> but uh, there were a lot of adders on Jura, one has to say, and you had to be relatively fairly careful where you stuck your hand. What else do you, what else do you remember about it, this great, lone, desolate place with sea eagles flying above and the, the rain, the, the, you know, the sunlight descend, the, 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 the darkness descends at four o'clock in the afternoons and then... Well, that's you know, winter time, yes. Yeah. Uh, what do you remember of it, though, as, as a place to grow up? A wonderful place to grow up. I, I, I loved it. I thought it was great. I, in fact, indeed, I still go back today from time to time. Um, but uh, for somewhere for a child to grow up, I mean, as I said earlier on, it was you know, freedom was was the, the great thing. You could do what you liked, where you liked, how you liked. Um, there was nobody to molest you. Um, it was just just a fun place to be. Um, and that was my only because of my first real experience of. Or the point where you, you're sort of two, three, four, and you become more conscious of, of what's going on around you. And um, I just love helping around the farm. Probably a damn nuisance, I suppose, when most children are, of course, uh, sticking your fingers into places where you shouldn't be sticking them. And uh, I got a hell of a thump on my head from a, a, the bonnet of a tractor that I was messing around with. So, you know, mm -hmm. certainly right. There we go. At the end of 1948, so your father has finished what will actually be the final draft of mm. 1984 <clears throat> because he's too ill to complete subsequent drafts if indeed he wanted to do so. Uh, a specialist is called up from the, the mainland to examine him who suggests that he's taken away to um, a sanatorium immediately. Um, and there's this marvellously, um, I think it is one of your sort of great memories of him that's certainly been handed down in the books about him of 
this, the beginnings of this trip of him going down to, to Craighurst and then sort of going off down across Isla and on the ferry and the two of you sitting in this vehicle yes, in the pouring yes. rain eating boiled could you, could you yes, tell us so a bit that was, about I that? think this was well, probably been about four and a half. Uh, about four and a half, then? yes. I think this was his last journey um, off the island. Um, what usually happens, uh, and nearly of time, we, we had a car and on the road down to the sort of the, the first village, which was eight miles away, before we got to a sort of um, a hard tarmac road, uh, inevitably we'd get a puncture. So on this particular occasion, we got a puncture, as we usually did. And Ab and her husband-to-be, Bill Dunn, who was actually living at Barn Hill and, and round the farm on a, a, for, for my father, they had to walk back to Barn Hill, get the wheel brace, get spare tire, and so on and so forth. So here was my father and myself sitting in the car, raining, um, one afternoon, and he would simply he ch talked to me about what I have no idea, but uh, I think he probably made up little bits of poetry. And, and he was concerned to reassure you, wasn't he? Oh yes, was yes. Nothing, no, no, nothing untoward. He, because I mean, we we actually know. I mean, in fact, we we know that the, the specialist had said that he would, in fact he was taking what remained of his life in his hands merely by making that journey, and that a particular a, a bump in the road could have. Could have, that artery, well, it, it could, could have precipitated. Could have uh, then, then yes, could have, could have split his artery. His health that, so he's taken. He's taken away. He's he's well. He's first taken to the Scottish mainland, and he ends up in uh, the Cranham Sanatorium um, near Bath, at the beginnings of the West Country, uh, where he's really very ill indeed, mm. um, and um, at that point um, almost despaired of. His friends go to visit him. What was happening to you in early 1949 while this was going um, on? Yeah, it's going yeah, to yeah. go back just a little bit. Um, of course, that wasn't his first trip to hospital. He had already been to a place called Hermes mm. in East Kilbride, where David Astor uh, managed to get a hold of streptomycin, which was administered to him, and unfortunately had no idea how, what the dosage to, uh, should be. And he reacted very, very badly, and his lips blistered and his fingernails fell off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I th it's, it's a great shame. I think had they administered it in, in correct quantities, it might well have done him a power of good. All of which he noted in the most detached and dispassionate way. Absolutely, yes, very objective. Fingernails falling off, uh, <laughs> yes. you know, skin in rashes. It's extraordinary the detachment that he could show towards his own yes, life. Yes, uh, and it? I think it was, he was in a great deal of pain. Um, I think he found it extremely unpleasant. Certainly when, when his lips were sealed together, they had to sort of force his lips apart. Uh, did, did not you, a lot of fun. Did you see him in early 1949? Did you see him at this point? When? Was, what, what, was he thought too infectious for you to... I don't remember seeing him when he was in Hermes, no. but certainly when we, he moved off the last time, mm. uh, and in this, this uh, occasion where he and I were sitting in the car waiting for, for Ab and Bill to come back with, with the spare wheel. Um, I think he probably, I think he was probably aware that this might be the last time that he was going to be um, on bar, uh, at uh, Mondura. You think that he knew that all the I think there was probably something in, I think he, 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 something in the back of his mind he probably told him that yes. he was actually really quite ill. Yes. And anyway, the point was that uh, he then moved down to a place called Cranham Sanatorium uh, near, near Stroud. And I followed him down there in the summer of 49 and stayed in a place called White Base. Oh, which the, was anarchist, a, the anarchist, the anarchist colony, yes. yes. The anarchist yes. Colony. Um, I a, and there was, I suppose, was the first time I actually played with other children. Uh, at the age of five? At the age, well, yes, yes. By, by the age of five. Um, although I had been going to the village school on Jura. So How many, what was the role of that? Oh, God knows, about 12, I think, about 10 or 12. Um, I, I would be taken down on a Monday and I stayed with the postmaster and his family and went, attended the school and then uh, my father or, or Bill would come down and pick me up on a Friday afternoon and go back to Barn Hill. So I'd already started school, uh, but the school in uh, Gloucestershire was the second one I'd been, I think it was just a, 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 a small infant school. But uh, yes, I used to be tumbled off there.